Hey everybody, welcome back to Advanced Kayak Angler Podcast. Appreciate y'all listening. Uh, if you're looking at my background, things are going to be, I'm going to be moving around here for a while. We, we're selling our house, so uh, everything that was in my little podcast studio is now packed up. So uh, I'll be here in the dining room for a couple of weeks, and then who knows after I, I'll, I'll be all over the place. So yeah, I ho hope the Everything still goes well and all that, but yeah, thank you all for listening. This week, I've got somebody I've wanted to have, have on forever, OG in the sport. I know whenever I started like eight years ago or something like that, that he, I mean, he was a fixture in the sport then and, you know, just my super respected in the sport and somebody I've always wanted to talk to, watched him online forever, even talked to him online before, you know how that goes. But uh, yeah, here we go. Got uh, the man himself, the feral one, Chris Funk. How you doing, man? Oh, doing good, man. I, I appreciate that. Thank you for the wonderful intro. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Well, I, we, we were talking before. So you work for the power company. So and yes, you've been doing that for a long time, right? Yes, sir. I've been uh, with them for 22 years now. I, uh, uh, I, I don't sound like it, but I was actually born in Maryland, you know, and uh, had moved all over with Daddy in the military. But I finished up in Alabama with him retiring down at Fort Rucker. Okay. And uh, and so we, I've been in Alabama since I was twelve. That's the reason I sound like I do. <laughs> of course, he was from Kentucky, so I, I sort of have his a little bit of his draw along with it. But yeah, I've I've been here in up in Smith and Phoenix City now since uh, nineteen eighty six. So this is home. This is where my ashes will go. You know, I'm four hours from speckled trout down south, and four hours from rainbow trout up north. So it's as close to heaven you. as you can get. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, man, I you know I, I don't mean to comment on another another man how he looks, but congrats on the weight loss, dude. Oh, thank you, brother. That is, uh, it's funny you say that. Uh, tomorrow I start on another run of seventy five hard. I'm uh wow. I'm gonna try a little bit more, but uh, I'm I think right now eighty eighty four total. Uh, my bride and I together are down a, a little over one hundred fifty pounds. So we've been we've been trying that very hard. She's She's definitely yeah, there, my. There, there wasn't much to her. No, there, well, she, she, you're right. There wasn't. Now she ain't much of nothing. About weight, but he's like a piece of pine straw. But I mean, it's, uh, it was awesome watching her. She was by far tougher. You know, her, her weight loss was a drop, and then this, this, this solid line is just gorgeous. And mine looks more like a, a, a sine wave. You know, up down, up down, up down. But uh, we're both making progress in the same direction. She's been maintaining for like three years now, and. I still got a little bit more that I'd like to get off if at all possible, but I promise you at uh, the 197 you know, to 198 feels a whole lot better than 280 did. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe it. I mean, I'm, I'm not too far from that now. I, I could use probably 150 hard, you know. <laughs> it, I, it, it was definitely an eye opening experience. And I, and, you know, for me, which we, we, we did it, you know, through a, a metabolic place that, that really taught us how to eat. You know, I didn't want to do anything in a box. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to do any, any really supplements or, or stuff. I wanted just to know how to eat better. And that's what we're doing is, is it's what, cause I cook a lot. And, uh, and then of course, you know, forever it was the fried stuff and everything else. But now we, you know, we limit it. We eat smart. We eat as clean as possible and, and, and boosting the proteins, you know, boosting the veggies I've eat. Like old Jerry Clower said, I've eaten so many uh, vegetables the last two years. I think they got to tie a coal oil rag around my ankle to keep the cutworms from eating on me. But it's, <laughs> it's I've, I've, I feel better. I, I'm, you know, at 51 now and I'm lighter than I was when I got my driver's license at 16. So, wow. and, and I, and I feel a whole lot better than I have in years and years and years. So I'm, I'm going to keep with, stay with the course, you know. So I'm, I'm 44. I'm getting up there. I like, I mean, I'm not trying to turn this into a health thing, but like, like you, you hear people say whenever they lose a bunch of weight that they, they feel better and things like that. Is there like any, like, what, can you talk a little bit more about that? Like, what are some exa like, you just feel like you can just jump around. Well, <laughs> I, it, I mean, the, uh, my plant went through a three month health thing, uh, not too long ago. We, we, we started in March and ended up at the, uh, uh end of July. Which I, I won, by the way, so that was kind of yeah. cool. But but it, I, it had I, I, I've done that before too. <laughs> it had flexibility, which and that's something you know as, as kayak anglers, man, you don't think about it. But mm. the at two eighty, I had to use a stand up strap. I had to use you know an aid to get out of my seat and to be able to sit down. Well, now, man, I could stand up and I could sit down, controlled, not just plop down, you know, into a boat. 
Uh, the, the flexibility is, is, is immensely better. And, and where I work, I mean, my, our boilers are 145 steps up and it's, it's not unusual for me to have to climb all six of them, you know, in a day. And I'm telling you back when you're toting, you, just, just to put it in, in the, I guess the, the best way to put it, I wear a 40 pound vest when I walk a lot of times, when you put that on and walk, feel what it feels like when you carry that every day, getting it out of bed, you know, everything you do, every step you take, has got an extra 40 pounds on. Well, then you take that 40 pound vest off and it's like, Lord, I mean, that's just a, that's an immense weight coming off of your knees, off your joints. So, you know, and then also when I was a heavy, I, if I sat down, I just fell asleep. I was just always tired. I just constantly. And for now I have a lot more energy. I mean, I, I, I I'm up in the morning, I'm running, I'm going, I'm doing, uh, before, I don't know if you know, you know about my leg, but I, I, uh, in 2020, right when COVID junk started up, I dropped a tree on my leg, the dumbest, yeah. thing. but, uh, I, so I gave myself a TPF, a, a tibial plateau fracture and having, thankfully I've lost a little bit of weight before that happened, but having that extra weight off of like the plate and the screws in my leg has been really good for my health as well. And I've actually been able to go back to running, which I didn't think I'd ever be able to do. And I've my 5K times now are five minutes faster than they were before my injury ever happened, mm. uh, just from having that extra weight off. So I'm it's it's a, there's a lot of good things, and I know you know hey we ain't promised tomorrow I may get hit by a truck tomorrow, but I can promise you I feel better today. And having a mama that's diabetic who had other you know, diabetics in the family when when my A1C number started getting up to that kind of pre-diabetic stage, that was definitely an eye-opening experience for me. And I said. Now that's, I've got to, I got to do something and I got to do it now. And also having a boy that's behind us watching us as an example, he's starting 75 hard with me tomorrow. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he'll stay the course because it, it's good for you. And, and, you know, it's kind of like having a, a dog that you work pretty hard. It, they always tend to behave better when you, when you've got them working harder, I probably work behave a little bit better when I'm working harder too. <laughs> I like it. Well, like I said, man, congrats. Well, How thanks, I sir like to kind of get into kayak things, how has that, I'll, I'll backtrack here in a minute, but it's kind of segue into that. Has it, has the weight difference changed the kayaks you like or your perception? Cause I, everybody knows you're a big Jackson guy. Mm -hmm. And, and that's one of the things that everybody respect. I mean, me included, everybody respects about you at most because you get a kayak, you tell it like it is, you're straightforward with everything. And it's, you know, I, I think that that, has always pushed me. I own, I own, we have two Jacksons and it's pushed everybody who's ever looked at Jackson into, well, this is straight talk. I'd rather have this. Everybody right. appreciates that. What has it changed your perception on some of your kayaks being lighter? Like, are you like, well, now I, I prefer my Kilroy all the time because <laughs> I, I don't need the, the X or what, you know, how, how has that changed anything for you? my stability uh and balance yeah. you know and and i i did that video not too long ago that i put out about working on the the endo board and just using that in kind of the 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 health side of it but it it really does make a huge difference in being able to stand in any boat um now you know of course the x is a beast i mean it's it's a heavy yeah. boat but it you, you only notice that out of the water on the water it paddles great so i'm i think the 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 having the extra strength you know to be able to to put it in places i'm i am paddling in wilder water than i would have ever dreamed that i would have done i'm i'm, I'm not comfortable in white water i mean i'm not it's not like you know you know yeah i fished behind a lot of people i fished behind drew gregory that that's just he does amazing things and i fished behind jameson you know he does amazing things jeff little oh my gosh that guy will literally blow you away on the water the stuff that that guy could do and I'm, I, I honestly, I guess I, I say I'm, I have too much poultry in my blood to be comfortable doing that. I'm just too big a chicken. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I have definitely done more in the last year or so. And of course, the, the boat design is one thing, but also being comfortable in your own strength and your own skin and then stability and being able to react faster. I mean, you know, that's you got to think that's, you know, 60 or 70 pounds less that's high up in a boat that's going to yeah. pitch it and throw it one way or the other. So I would say I'm more comfortable in all of our line, but although I, I, since I guess I'm used to toting so much equipment, I'm still in all of our big boats. I paddle the take two. Um, 
you know that that's one of that's the other book that I run a lot is the Take Two and the X. So yeah, I'm still in the the bigger boats, but it, I have the strength to paddle them, you know, 20 miles in a day now. Whereas before it'd be like, nah, I, I'm gonna pull over here and take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> so I, all right, so to backtrack, how do you get into kayak fishing? Did it start in a canoe or what? We were we were canoeists for that 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 that's what I can imagine. Like yep. you know, living down there, you. uh maybe a uh, heck even a Piro or something down there in Columbus, all that skinny water. How did you get into it? We it is more or less because of young married couples. I mean, we couldn't afford nothing, you know, I mean, tater chips was a luxury yeah. item for us. And, and I mean, my dad, uh, who we were best of friends up to the time I lost him, you know, we, he had a boat, but I mean, you know, I, I'm not one that I was going, wasn't going to borrow daddy's boat to go fish on the days that I could go fish. And I was working second shift. Uh, through the textile mill for a little over eight and a half years. So I, I had mornings, a lot more mornings than he did working. So I needed something. And what, what we, our first thing was old Coleman Ramex canoe. And man, I hauled that boat everywhere. And, and Angie started fishing with me and, and, and we had, you know, John boats and stuff like that through the years, but you know, John boat towed a battery, towed a trolling motor, stuff like that. It was just easier to throw a canoe in the water and the simplicity of it was wonderful. So I, I, we, we fished out of the canoe for years and years and years. And it wasn't until Ethan, our boy, I think it was nine years old when by the, that time we had got up to the old town one six nine, which was a wonderful boat, a uh, uh, 16 and a half footer, you know, very, very nice canoe. And we had all paddled it, but it got to where it was time for him to get out of the boat. So we ended up finding a little old kayak for him. And the plan was Angie and I were going to stay in the canoe and he was going to paddle the, the, the kayak. Well, man, he got in that thing and it was just like he was master, you know, captain of his own destiny and took off like a rocket. Well, he we got so tickled when he came back to the bank. I, I told Angie, I said, I said, y'all to give it a try. And brother, when she sat in that kayak and took off, I knew my days of, of, a, of a full family in a canoe was over with. So he got the first kayak. Angie got the second kayak. I made the dumb mistake, which is kind of how my videos go of trying to tell people, look, you can learn a lot from where I've screwed up, but I, it was January and I stopped by Dick's picked up big box store. Like everybody does saw yep. one. Well, that thing's rated for what my weight is. And I ran to the water with it in blue jeans in January and plop that thing down. And when I sat down, water shot up through the scupper holes soaked me to death i like to got hypothermia by the time i got that sucker out of the water and still had the stickers on it. i carried it back to dick so fast i i, I made a, a vapor trail you know and and i said i'm done i'll go back to my canoe and i paddled the canoe probably for another year and it wasn't until i actually went to uh uh blacks I, uh it's black something down in jacksonville black black river outfit or something like that anyway and i saw a native magic 145 down there and i said that that thing looks like one it looks like it's big enough to hold me two it, it kind of had an open more it wasn't canoe like the the commanders and the uh things like that are but it still had a more of an open top and i said that looks more my speed and i paddled that thing around down there and then called my bride and asked her if it was okay for me to bring it home with me and that was my first high-end uh, uh kayak but i mean you had a a real you know, a shop there that knew, all right, what do you like? What are you going to do with it? Oh, you're going to carry camera equipment. Oh, you're going to fish. You're going to want to do this. Well, this, this boat will be good for that. You know, unlike going to Dick's where, I mean, that them, them guys, they don't, most of them, as far as kayak goes, they, they don't know one end of it from the other. These yeah. were, this is a pro shop and they put me in that boat and it wasn't until we got home. I, and I, I paddled that boat for a, a solid year and a half or two before we end up meeting up with the crew here that, uh, um, and I got a commander and started working my way from there and loved that commander, man. I fished it for a while. And then it was, uh, Ethan actually started working at that shop and got, uh, Jackson Cusa. Uh, we, we were shooting the new, when it first came out, the new boat, a buddy of mine that worked there. He's like, can you, you reckon you can shoot a, a show bass show out of this? And I said, man, I, I, I shoot a jet airplane. I'm sure I could shoot somebody fishing, you know, and that's how it's funny, but that's how it worked. And and then he actually ended up getting Ethan on the Jackson team as a youth member. And I, being the daddy, drove Ethan up to Jackson to go to one of their summits 
and end up shooting the glow boat that they had, the, the, the Illuminati boat, just because, I mean, I'm, I'm a camera nut. I, I do that stuff. That's what I, I was just playing with it in camp and they were like, well, who are you? And I'm like, I'm, I'm his. And they're like, well, he's on the team. I, 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 I nobody actually ever invited me to be on the team. I'm probably the only Jackson team member that never actually got a true <laughs> invitation. <laughs> I think I just sort of grew there like a mushroom, you know, <laughs> I like it. But it, it's been good. It's, it's been a, it's been a fun run. And of course, Ethan, he still fishes with me some, but, but Angie is my, she's my running and gunning partner. She, she fishes and we enjoy paddling tandem still, uh, which I know a lot of, a lot of husbands and wives can't do, but man, I mean that to, to have time on the water without a cell phone, you know, without a TV going and just being able to communicate back and forth. I, if more people paddled husband and wife, either side by side or in tandems, we probably wouldn't have the marital problems that America has these days. <laughs> That's right. I'm, me and my wife, we, before I, I mean, I went from, cause I'm from Biloxi fish inshore growing up. And then we moved down there and we can, we canoed a few times. It's, it, you know, I, it's one of those things where it is difficult, but then it makes you feel good whenever you see like other couples or like, <laughs> like we went whitewater rafting. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, a uh, much tamer, I, I forget the name of the, uh, some weird, crazy name up in North Carolina a couple of weeks ago. And whenever we're doing it well, and then other couples aren't, it, you know, it makes you feel like, like you and your wife are doing something together. It's, it's, are y'all, it's, are y'all in the Nanahala? No, it was, the, uh, uh, it's the other one, the easier one. The, uh, uh okay. Cause we, part of the Nata Halo that is that Angie and I, we, we, we paddled that right shortly after we got married mm-hmm. and, uh, and she is, she is definitely not a whitewater fan yeah. and that, that 43 degree water, I, I ended yeah. up in it a time or two being dumb. But. <laughs> Cause we, we went and ate at the outdoor center there at, on the Nata Halo. Mm-hmm. We ate there a couple of times. It's, it's the, the tuck, t- tuck is Kigigi or. Something oh like shoot, yeah. It's uh, it, it's it's the calmer one because we have a seven year old, so ten four. Yeah, we don't want to get too crazy. And I, <laughs> no, I I'd actually, understand. I'd actually never done it before. Like I've kayaked and canoed and everything, but never done any whitewater rafting. So, but the kids into it now. So, well, that's we went up the other day to shoot because you know definitely having your kayak in a whitewater, which Jeff has some wonderful videos. Jeff Little on little stuff. Yeah. You know, he's got some great footage on what to do and that's people don't realize you know what it it's it's counterintuitive to actually lean downstream when you're crossing into moving water across a seam you know and then leaning you know uh, uh downstream into a rock if you're floating into it you don't think about stuff like that but when you get out there we we went out and just took everything out of the boats and we're just playing around the other day just to kind of get get you know the used to that feeling and I had a bunch of great footage in my uh, my GoPro card corrupted. So I was like, oh, well, I'll we'll have to go back and shoot that again. But that's what people really need to do is just like right now while the water's warm, it's inconsequential. You know, take your gear out, set it on the rock, go out there and play and wreck it and just see what your boat will do, see what you're capable of. Make sure that you're good for getting back in your, you know, uh, deep water reentry and stuff like that. I mean, that, man, that, that kind of training is just – uh, it's priceless because when it does happen, you know, if you have a few of those uh, uh, re-entries in your back in your mind, you'll you'll know what to do. And I, we try to uh, to stress that with anybody we're getting started in this stuff is to get out there and wreck it. It's fun right now. It's hot, so who cares if you swim? You know, nobody's going to laugh at you harder than yourself. Go do it. <laughs> and especially with the bigger kayaks nowadays, like a lot of people, I've had to do it, and a lot of people don't do it, and then they realize. Oh, like I need a strap to help me get that back over or something right. like you, there, there might be something that you need to add to your kayak to help you to get it back over that, or, or you might be, I know some people think, well, I'll just let my kayak, hopefully I'll just fall out and let my kayak go and then I'll do whatever from the bank. I'll have my phone on me or, or they, they kind of, they try and make all these excuses or they have different thoughts that I'm not going to have to flip my kayak back over. That isn't something I really need to be that can, I'm not going to flip it or, or whatever. Get out there and do it. Like, right. you know, if, if you're going to be legit into kayaking and this is from somebody, if you're just getting into it or you're the guy who's been doing it forever and you've never got out there and do it, do it. Just, just do it. 
<laughs> well, that's the same thing, trusting your PFD. I know, you know yeah. I see a lot of beginners that, that want to get a life jacket and they want the biggest pockets that they could find. I'm like, that's fine and dandy, but you got to think, we, you got to crawl those pockets up over the side of that to get back in. So I, and, and for the guy that had a big belly too, for a long time, you put belly and pockets on the front of you. That is not an easy thing to reenter, you know, doing that way. So I, I try to stress with people, the pockets are nice and dandy, but most of that gear would probably be better off in a dry bag. Anyway. Uh, I keep the minimal stuff. I mean, I've, uh, you know, I've got a, a, a small pair of pliers, I've got my whistle that I need and, you know, tape measure if I need something like that, but there ain't a whole lot of stuff in my pockets. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't want to have to crawl over and get back in a boat. <laughs> yeah. I've got boomerang clips attached to me, whistle and my phone. And that's it. Yeah. And but that's that, the phone one. you have to, cause the tournament stuff. Oh you know? yeah. yeah. One, one of those people. <laughs> so, so is that how you got into doing the YouTube and like just going up there, hanging out with the Jackson guys and then kind of just, you know, like I them. Think, yeah, go, yeah go, sir, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, that's that's quite all right. I, I I probably would blame it on James Macbeth, and and the sort of the fact that he he says, look, there's there's a lot of people out there that are you know the Drew Gregory's that are super. I mean, Drew was a spider monkey man. He could stand on anything, and I mean, you know, he'd stand up in a seat, turn around. I watched. I literally watched him fight fish standing in a Cuda 14 backwards. You know. Uh, and it was amazing to me because I could barely stand in it and, and you know, paddle. So, yeah. but, but James Macbeth, he said, look, he said, there's, there's a lot of people out there that see these guys and they think that's, that's fine and dandy, but that's not normal. I mean, this guy's super athletic. He's, he's, he trains for this kind of stuff. They really need to see somebody. And I don't say, I don't say they're not normal, but I mean, you know, even, even Jameson, you know, is, isn't necessarily normal. I mean, he's built for this stuff. He does this stuff and, and it, but if you look at me, like, man, I'm, I'm just a regular dude, you know, and, and I, and I screw up and I fail and, and, and hopefully people look at me and say, all right, I, I can identify with that. I, that's the kind of guy I, I see me there. I don't see me as, you know, muscular spider monkey or whatever. Or I, I, I see me as that dude. So maybe he could, but what he says will work for me. And, and I want to be that way. I mean, cause it is for us, it's, it's, it's almost more like a ministry, you know, you serve folks and you, and you, and you want it to be, something that people are going to enjoy and come back. And, and yeah, you may not buy a Jackson, you know, you, but I want, I want you to be one safe too happy because happy people are, are going to tell friends about it. They're going to want to, you know, get better watercraft going forward. And, and, and so that, you know, maybe one day you'll end up at a, in a Jackson, you know, yeah. but if nothing else, I want you to be happy and I want you to be safe at what you do because Lord knows we see so many people that buy. I think the COVID thing taught us there's so many people that bought kayaks and then instantly turn around and started dumping them or, or having to add motors because they don't know how to paddle. They don't, you know, there's, there's no paddle discipline there, you know, or you, you, it just, or folks that are even being just dangerous in them going out places and, and sinking them or, or, or going, you know, crossing uh, uh, big rivers with a lot of boat traffic and, and thinking that they have the right of way. It's like, man, you got to think about this stuff before you get out there. We're, you know, and, and I, I want to be that kind of person that can help those people to enjoy what they do make sure it's safe. And then also, so that then they're, they're going to be ambassadors going forward and hopefully turn that around and say, look, you know, this is how I started. This is what I learned. Let's, let's get you straight. And if we can do that going forward, I think kayak fishing overall would be a, a better, you know, a, a better experience for us all. Yeah, for sure. So, I, I mean, you're such an outdoorsman that like you said in the beginning, you love the salt, the trout, the what you know, the uh, Oka Kanofi, is that where you go? Oki Fanoki, yes, sir. Okie yes, sir. Fanoki, there you go. Like yeah. it, you, you let you do so many different outdoors things on the water. Like, what's your favorite? What, what's your perfect day out on the water? It's oh, it's man. it seems like it's kind of hard to to nail you down to a certain thing. What 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 is it? What what like what's that it perfect is. day? People tell you know it's the same thing. Folks ask me what's your favorite fish to catch, and I say the next one. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm a I'm an equal opportunity, man. I, I don't care uh, if it's a three-fingered brim on a three-weight fly rod, you know, or, or a four-pound shell bass. I, I'm, I, I'll go and chase any critter that swims. And, man, I don't know. If it, if it had to be something perfect, I guess my bride would have to be along with me. That'd be about the perfect day out of water. But, but and, and Is she listening? 
She's around the corner. She's I'm, over I'm there. She's got. She's watching TV. She's over there coughing, trying not to disturb us. But, <laughs> but you, you see this this place behind me. That that's a uh, that's Point of Shane, Louisiana. Yeah, um, yeah. That's that's I, one I of my live down there. That's one of my favorite places to paddle. And I would have a hard time deciding whether you know belly crawling reds. Uh, when you get a when you get a perfect day on the flats and you're seeing them copper, you know, red backs sticking up out of the water and you're stalking them, sight fishing for them, man, I'm telling you, that is, is that's about as good as it gets. And then the, the Okie Finoki, uh would probably be my, my, that'd be up there on the top two, I'd say, because there's places down there and it's so quiet. There's not, you know, you have a, a few tourists around, but for the most part, it's so quiet. You can actually hear your, your own heartbeat. You know, you can hear your blood squishing through your veins. It's, it's just a advanced silence down there. And you're surrounded with so many neat critters. And then when the bow fin are hitting, man, I'm telling you, you, you will, I'll come home bruised and with sore shoulders from, and I actually have to swap from spinning rods to bait casting rods because I set the hook with different hands because I'm tearing up my, my shoulders setting the hook so much. So I, it would either be Point of Shane or the Okie Finoki would be probably, if I had one, one place to fish on earth before I had to leave this place, it would be one of them two spots. And where, where's the Okie Finoki? Oh, I can't even it, say it. Okie Pinocchio's in uh, southeast Georgia and northern Florida. So uh, okay. uh, it's right below Val, uh, Valdosta. All right. and, uh, and it's a, it's huge. I mean, it's a 438,000 acre swamp, you know, but, but, and you can, you can either get permits to go out and camp on raised platforms in the swamp, which there's only six, I think six permits allowed at a time. And then you move from one camp to the next. There's two islands that you can camp on out there, but you move from one place to the next. We did a, three day 47 mile or uh, year four last that was a really neat trip out there but otherwise we go and just in camp and it's like Stephen c foster state park set up all our gear and go do day trips out on the suwannee sill that's the headwaters of the suwannee river so it's 250 something miles down to the gulf from there on the river which would which would be a neat adventure one of these yeah, days I would, I would love to do that but it's it's a, just a gorgeous place to fish. There's not a whole lot of bass because of the tannic acid in the water is so high. Uh, the Swanee side has more bass, but so we're mostly fishing for bow fin and, and they call them uh, blackfish down there, mudfish. But a uh, uh, lot, of, lot of fun species to catch, but it is such a gorgeous place. And then we'll just come back to camp, you know, and eat good and uh, sit there and camp around a campfire and, and enjoy ourselves and get back next morning and, and go take off. Uh, and I run the camera a lot down there. I don't, you know, I've, uh, the camera nut anyway, but I've yeah. seen everything from, you know, big old turkey strutting to finally got a black bear picture there a uh, year four last that actually ended up being on the, the, the Okie Finoki parking pass. Uh, I won that contest with that bear picture. So that was kind of cool. Huh. But, there, there, there's uh, some I, bears down there too, huh? Isn't that what well, they are? If they're black bears, it's all black oh. bears. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. And they, uh, it's, it's neat. So you, you'll, you'll see the sign, but I, as many times I've been there, I'd never seen one. I'd always been somebody said, Oh, there was one here yesterday, or there was one just around the trail, you know, and, and never see them. But I finally got, I finally ran across one and got my camera on at the same time. So, <laughs> so I, I, I mean, my wife, she's, she's does photography too. What, what's your camera set up? I, I think uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask that. Right now, I shoot a, a Nikon D500, uh, which uh, with the 18 to 300 is that's my fishing camera. So that's the one that I'm always shooting for. You know, any any, any fishing shots you've ever seen me take, that 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 one uh, or some sort of variation of that camera, the Nikon fires off instantly. So if I turn it on, it's ready to go. I, uh, if my wildlife camera and just the the one that I carry around when we're just cruising is a, a Sony RX10 Mark four i think is what they are but uh it's a, a 28 to 600 millimeter but it's a bridge camera so it's all built in so it's one lens but it's it's a really good camera to shoot especially for wildlife and all kind of stuff like that the only problem is when you turn it on the it the lens has to come out and it has to get ready so it, it mm. it's got a little bit of a lag you and if you're fighting a fish yeah. you know i can be on that I, you've seen I, I can get in my watershed bag which if, if anybody shoots stuff, you, you need to have a watershed bag. Uh, that, that's one of the best ways to carry your camera on the water. But I, I can grab my camera and be out. And usually by the time the fish's second jump has happened, I can be shooting you with that Nikon. And I guess it's just second nature now. I've done it. I don't, there's no telling how many tens of thousands of shots I've taken on the water. Of course, not all of them turn out right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
that's how I, I think the probably the, the most famous shot that I ever took was uh, the owl flying around the, the Jackson Kilroy. And and when Brooks threw up a frog, Brooks Betty throwing a frog near the bank, and uh, I saw the owl pitching toward him. So I grabbed my camera and snatched out and got the owl coming in as he hit the water, splashed, and then flared away from Brooks in that Kilroy. Well, there was a professional photographer right over my shoulder that mm-hmm. was paid to shoot that trip. I was just there to shoot pictures for Drew Gregory, to take pictures for him for Z-Man and stuff like that and some Jackson stuff. But the, the magazine guy was behind me. Well, he didn't get that shot. I did. So All my right. picture made it in the magazine. He's like, yeah, thank you, Lord. I was at the right spot, right time. You know? <laughs> I like it. I, I, I do have a question. When, when do you go camping? Because I've never – I've camped out of a canoe – which has all that space. How do you, how do you camp out of a, a kayak? Like I can't even imagine, like, I mean, you have a take two, so you have a lot of room in there, but how, how are you sizing stuff down to go on a camping? Cause we loved it. We car camp. I mean, I have like an awning on my truck and we, you know, we love to camp and all that, but I've never done it out of a kayak. Okay. Do you have any pointers to do that? Yes, sir. And that's, I've got a, a video on my YouTube channel that's that's basically on that. And and but Damn, I, and, it, and that's and it's a for me, it's it kind of shows what we went through. But I mean, you're you are correct. I mean, the now the take two, you could take too much stuff. You yeah. can, you know, but the thing is, man, folks gotta realize that what you take, you're paddling. I mean, you know, you're you're actually having to push it around and, and deal with it. So I try to limit, and unfortunately, camera gear ends up in the most stuff that we have to carry anyway. If I didn't have to carry camera gear, I, I, I'd be golden. Right. But uh, I've, I've got a really small camp chair, which, of course, the Jackson, you know, and, and a lot of other manufacturers, you can take the chair out. So that's a that's a moot point. You don't have to have that. But I uh, through the years, I've, I've picked up these little small, It's a I think it's climate is the, the chair. But I also have a, a, a late start, Kelty late start tent. So it's a real small tent. And it's a it's a two man, but I take it and then I've got a, a climate mat that I'll blow up. So, I mean, everything I've got, you know, deflates and goes into really small packs so I can put it in a hatch really easily. Um, and then that's what I do is I just, you know, of course, nothing in a kayak is waterproof. So I just pack my stuff either in, in a decent size, like a 30 liter waterproof bag. And then I put it down in the in the front of the hatch or the back hatch. And I, I that's why I kind of like a boat like a bite that's got the, the big hatch in the front, or I mean the big tank well in the front, big tank well in the back, because I'm not limited with what I can put in a boat. You know, I, I just, I kind of stack it. And then as I stack up, making sure everything lay, is laying good, because you don't want to, you, you know, if you paddle 20 miles with everything leaning this way, you're going to, you're hate, you're going to hate it tomorrow with your back. So you got to yeah. make sure you kind of lay your weight in there correctly. And then I'll, I'll bungee over the top or, or just take a strap over the top and, and keep everything pinned in like it needs to. So it doesn't shift on me. Um, I carry a, a Kelly kettle is what I, I use for cooking. And it's just a little small aluminum kettle that's got a, a, a little stove base on the bottom of it. And I'm sure you could use like a peak. I think the, the, the jet fuel stoves, those are nice. Yeah, but this yeah. thing, it, I can burn pine cones in it. So I can, I'll cook over what I, you know, whatever you find out there that's dry. So I can use a, you know, bark, pine cones, you know, fat light or whatever I need. And, and, the before i go on the trip i'll pre-cook my meals and do like uh you know one of the favorites just steak green beans and stuff like that maybe a few taters and i'll double foil wrap them and then freeze them so they're already seasoned Mm. they're cooked and they're already there and they're and they're frozen so that's my ice too so as you're camping you know that stuff's going to stay cold well all i do is i pull that out that way i don't have to have salt and pepper i don't have to have you know any seasoning nothing like that I got my meal pre-measured, pre-made. I cook it and warm it up in that tin foil. Open up the top. I eat what I, you know, all my stuff out of it. And then, you know, the trash. Of course, bringing everything out. The trash folds in very small, so it's easy to get it all out and bring it home. But that's been my favorite tip for folks: is is yeah. if you remake your meals ahead of time and freeze them like that. Man, that'll save you a ton of weight and a, and a, a, a lot of time too. It seems like it'd be tough. I mean, I that's man, fantastic idea. It seems like it'd be tough for a multi-day trip like you're doing in the swamp there, like how you would bring that much water and that everything out on the kayak, you know. If for for us, which I've got the the a Yeti, uh, you know, the the bigger soft cooler, and then the Orion's, which I mean, if I was in, when, in yeah. the 
in the one in the in the take two, I got plenty of room for that Orion. You know, I mean that that was not a big deal. Sometimes, and and you guys know, but I mean as a as a team member, a lot of times I'm taking stuff because I need pictures for it. So uh, I could have done it probably a lot easier than hauling the Orion around. But I mean, it's a darn good product, you know. And I and I needed the pictures out there in the swamp, so I hauled it instead. But uh, if if you've got like a decent polar bear cooler, is another really good option. That's a soft cooler, and yeah. what you do is you freeze your water bottles ahead of time. So as they thaw, that's the water that goes into my coffee pot. So, you know, that's my, some of my drinking water. So I, I just, I, it, it's, it serves dual purposes. So it's not like putting a 10 pound bag of ice. That's not going to do you any good. You know, these are solid blocks of ice. They're going to last longer. And then they're also something usable, like your drinking water that reduces the amount of water you have to have on the front end of it too. So now on the Tallapoosa uh, trip, the one we took with Jeff Little one, uh, we got flooded out actually, I mean, like, like, like life-threatening flooded. Uh, the water came up while we were in our in our tents and and floated our tents away with us in them. Uh, that was kind of exciting. But uh, but on that trip, I actually took a water filtration system and made water on the trip wow. out of the Tallapoosa. So that was that was pretty cool. A little uh, the life straw. Fil- I had a life straw for drinking while I was in the boat. But this is a, a filter pro, I think is the name of it, and it's a pump system that so i just would pump up what i needed to go into my kelly kettle for making my coffee and that, yeah. that worked out pretty good because that, that, that was less water that i had to carry on that trip so heck yeah <laughs> it's kind of a neat thing you know I, I i like doing stuff like that and then it's the i tested it here in my little frog pond in the backyard i'm like if it'll filter this water i know it'll filter the <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never used i've always wanted to use one of those things i'll, I'll have to get one one day well, Man, maybe in the kid will go drink some weird water or something. Well, and the life straw itself, I mean, man, just, just safety stuff. I mean, I don't know if you've ever launched and, and not taken your water, you know, or forgot forgot to load yeah. up. And I, I did that one time here, and I will not make that mistake again. So that, yeah. that the life straw stays in my, my ditch bag, you know, where it's I've got a small watershed mm-hmm. that I carry everything I need. That's where my phone goes, whatever, you know, truck keys, all that. So if, if for whatever reason I got separated from the boat, you know, as long as I got that blue bag, I'm, I'm good. I've got my communications. I've got stuff to start a fire if I need. And then I've got that life straw. So I'm, I, I've got water. I've got protection if I need it. And I've got communication. I'm good. <laughs> That's a dang good idea. Man, I've never even thought about that. Cause I, I know at like last summer I got out and I just didn't, it was so hot during a tournament day. I did not have enough water and I just, I kind of got in a bad way. I just I had to stop and get in the water because mm-hmm. I was completely overheated, and uh, man, I wish I would have had one right then. That would have been nice. When we were in Panama doing uh, uh, the the shoot for the the Cusa FD over there, the we all launched and they gave us a little bottle, you know, a little jug of water to go out. Well, I mean, this is the Pacific, and this was yeah. May into June, and it was hot, and I was metering that water. Well, I. I pedaled so much I'm, I'm not a pedaler i'm a paddler you know but I, I pedaled so much that my legs cramped up and then i and then i started but i did have a paddle i actually took an aquabond paddle over there with me so i had a good paddle thank god but I, I grabbed the paddle and i started paddling well then it got to where i couldn't get my hands off the paddle my they, they actually had had cramped around the paddle mm. and i'd so i'd go back to pedaling and i'd pedal till my legs cramped and then i'd paddle till my arms cramped and i mean i was in a bad bad way when we got back to the beach, I looked around. I noticed that everybody else had like half their water jugs left. I'm like, how in the world? I'm about to die. You know, I was, I, 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 I'd lick the sweat off of somebody else's forehead right now. And I'm about to <laughs> die. And you guys have a half jug of water. And they said, well, well, he had extras for us out there. All you had to do is ask him. I'm like, wait a minute. Y'all had extra water all day long and nobody told me. <laughs> yeah. and that was probably the closest to dangerous dehydration that I've ever been. And I said, I mm-hmm. will never, never get in that way again. <laughs> yeah. So one, one question I do have for you is, I mean, you've you've been around it. You've, you've been in the sport for a long time. And you've seen the growth and how it's changed and everything else. Where do you see it? Like I hear a lot of, you hear a lot of people, oh, it's, this is happening. The sport's doing this, sport's doing that. Like what, what do you think? Where, where do you think it's going? I, you know, it, it's funny. Cause I, 
I see a lot of people with the, 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 the that were big into the glitter boat and the and the hardcore scene and, and on, on the and and I see them going simpler. Yeah. You know, now they're going. Oh, let's let's take out the John boat or let or let's get into a kayak and do that. And and what I I. I see that it's it's like there there's a certain contingent that's fine man if, if folks want to do the 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 underwater radar or the forward looking uh, stuff and 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 you know I've got a I've got a torpedo we actually uh, got a torpedo last year because because Jeff watching Jeff with it and there are times that man it's nice just to get out and set that torpedo we call them eagle, eagle cruises but we go watch for the eagles out here on Coat Rock Lake above the house. And we'll just go cruise. And I mean that's that's nice. It's it's enjoyable, yeah. but there is nothing there's nothing more than I enjoy than pro than probably taking two rods, honestly, probably my fly rods and a a handful of tackle and just going as simple as possible. I mean, I'm not I'm not shooting, I'm not, you know, I'm not carrying uh two yak attack you know packs full of gear i'm not right. worrying about it at six rods with me you know i'm just going to go fish and i honestly think that probably the more the more the bigger it gets there'll be some people that are attracted to that and drawn to that and i'm not i mean you know i don't i don't fish tournaments unless it's to raise money for a good cause i'll, I'll do that you know but other than that i don't enjoy that pressure and I don't handle that pressure well. I mean, to be 100% honest, I, I do not like the man I become under pressure. So I would rather go chase a three-finger bluegill, you know, or a bunch of 12-inch uh, spots than, than sit there and try to catch five bites that i got to have or I'm going to be a failure. I don't want to do that. So, uh, yeah. But I, I honestly think that going forward, one, Lord knows I hope one day the, the boats end up lighter because <laughs> the older we get <laughs> – the older we get, the harder it is to tote them. But I mean, I got to admit, I, I like some of the features and that's the thing. Everybody, I, we got to have features. we got to have features. Well, you got to think every feature that you add to a boat, it's adding pounds and it's adding dollars, you yeah. know, and, and at some point or another, I hope manufacturers come back and say, Hey, look, we hear you. This is for those guys, but for you guys that still would like to have a 70 pound boat, that's fully capable of doing everything you want, you know, it may be plain Jane. You know, I, I'm old enough to remember like when you could used to could buy a truck that had plastic interior roll up windows and push down door locks, you know, and it was considerably cheaper than anything else out on the market, but it would do everything that one of them fancy trucks would do other than keep your soccer mom cool. You know, I mean, that's, uh, and, and I, I, I think that manufacturers have got to open their eyes and see that there's still a contingency out there, enough folks that, that need, that need, a boat that's affordable, solid, and we don't have to have all them bells and whistle. You know, yeah. that's, I can't say that I see that's the way it's going. Cause it seems like it's fancier, 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 but at, at, at some time or another, I mean, I've got a power boat, you know, I don't know that I would, I don't know why I need forward looking radar and then all those stuff. Like if I, if I'm going to do all that, I'll just go put the center console in the water, you know, but I am not near as happy in the big boat as I am when I'm just paddling and having a good time in that plastic boat. For sure. Amen to that. The, um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I'm just happy sitting here thinking about that. Like I, I just want to go out with a couple rods and the, in the bite and just paddle around. Cause most of the time I'm in that OB, you know? Well, and the, and the, the beauty is that, that there's options. You know, that's the beauty. Like, dude, if you want to do that, man, that's fine. I mean, I, I was, I've got really good friends, you know, Jim wears a uh, 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 360. Dude, that yeah. thing is, it's a, He's it's got incredible. A rig. It's yeah. a rig and it is incredible. And, and he works it. And I mean, and it's, it's for a reason, you know, I mean, that man is, he's a machine on the water. And I'm like, that's more power to you. I, I love it. That's great. You know, and, and it's, it's good that we've got those options. I mean, that's, that's the neat thing about it. Like I said, for me, man, if, I've got a tripper, which is the, the, the lightest of the Jackson line. And if I, you know, I had one time I was down in Florida and I knew that the landing that I was going to was way far away. I'm talking a mile or more down a trail that I had to get. And that was the boat I chose to fish the flats. I, I, that 60, you know, four, 65 pound tripper. And, uh, and I, I knew because I could put the gear in it and I needed it. And I just carried a couple rods and then, you know, a few, uh, uh, mirror lures and a couple of spooks and man, I, so I was packing as light as possible, but that's what I chose. And, you know, I, I watched your, uh, 
you think with Luke and Sam the other day talk about, you know, dragging heavy boats over rocks. I mean, yeah. man, I've been there, I've done it, you know, and, 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 it, and it, the lighter boat you can get to do that with, but you know, the way it is, everybody wants to stand and they, everybody wants something they could put a power pole on. Everybody wants, you know, this, that, and the other. And it's like, man, you, you, you can, you can wish in one hand, <laughs> but the more you wish and the more you want, it's kind of like the X. I mean, the X, I mean, it, it's an awesome boat. I would have loved to have seen that X probably, you know, two inches narrower and, and, and a whole lot lighter uh, yeah. would have been, a, would have been a dream for me. And I'm, I'm hoping maybe one day that, that Jackson revisit that, you know, I, I would have bought one. I, Cause I, and that's why I have the bite because whenever I do it, I do it as a Creek boat and my wife's boat, whenever I'm, I'm pedaling and hoping my kids got a, a skipper. Right. If, if, if that X would have been 20 pounds lighter, I mean, I, you know, you can't have everything. If it would have been 20 pounds lighter, I would have spent the money on that rather than the bite. And the funny thing is, with with that, uh, with the tri track on the side, I can, I can move that X almost as good as I can the bite. That's the funny thing about it. You know, other than picking it up, putting it on top of the truck, that's the one, that's the one thing. But, and and, and, and that, that's the thing. There's nothing I don't like about it. I I think that, that, that's, that's the best boat they've ever made. And now, especially Jackson bringing in the team members to actually have you, Dustin, everybody else on the team, all these people that have all this experience. And if every team, every kayak manufacturer isn't doing that, they're crazy because that is that in my mind, it's, it's heavy, but it's the best boat that and the NAR two best boats you ever made. And they're only getting better. And I think I know me, I'm excited to see what else Jackson's going to do, but, Man, I you know it's it, it's great the route they're going right now. And see, my bike, I've I've got a a, a bike that I rigged out. It's got the anchor trolley on the side, and I've got uh, all the spots on the back that I put Yaktac track on there for putting my camera arms. And that is one boat that I will I will probably never get rid of. I move in and out of boats, you know, because we have to keep, you know, we, we try to keep a, a current color, Ooh, a current right. model. So you know, just for for photos and. Of course, my bride's got a Liska that that's a we call it unicorn fart, but it's a it's an incredibly beautiful boat, and she will never let me get rid of that one. But uh, but we do swap in and out, just just trying to change things around to keep pictures, you know, sort of fresh. And but I'm telling you that bite, it, and that's that that's that simple, you know, you get out there and it is just a good paddling boat. It is incredible. I mean, I can stand and throw a cast net out of it. I can shoot a bow out of it. You know, I mean, it's 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 everything that I could ever hope and and want. And then and I look around like all right. Why am I taking the X today? Uh, oh, okay, I, let me go take the X. You know. <laughs> so, uh, how many kayaks do you have right now? Oh gosh. Do I, do I... <laughs> that, she, that she knows about. I don't want to get you in trouble. No, yeah, no. Uh, we've got two take twos, two bites, two X's, and two Liskas, and a tripper right now. So that's that's the okay. fleet right now. But we do take a, you know, we, we keep, cause we paddle a lot. And then we will, I, I try to make that offer. I'm like, man, look, if somebody wants to try one of these out, if, if I can get you on the water, I'll get you on the water, you know, and that's not a, a an, an empty statement. I've put people on the water that have come, you know, and, and met me at the lake and, and, and I, cause I want them. I mean, I want you to, I would rather you try a Jackson and not buy it. Then, then you buy one and and hate it, and then next thing you know, you're you're bad mouthing it on a forum or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. you know, I I want you to be happy, and and I've got buddies that that, that have you know have been in mine and, and have turned around and bought that boat, and it's like that makes me feel good when somebody does that. But the 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 thing for me is is I, I want to one I want to make sure that you you know everything that I know about that boat, and and like I said, there's things that I don't like about certain boats. I mean the X. The only thing about the X that I do not like is that 98 pounds. That is it. And and actually mine is a pre-production boat. So mine's seven pounds heavier than everybody else's, which is, is kind of a wild thing to even think about, but you would never know it. And when you, when you pick that thing up, it, it's funny. Every person that has picked it up has guessed the weight incorrectly, but that's just one of the things. But I mean, uh, but, I, but we'll swap in and out and, and move. And, and there'll be times like, I, yeah, I need shots for, you know, something that Jackson's doing. So we'll go grab this one. Of course, I mean, having the, the tandems, 
if we paddle with somebody that's got, you know, we've had folks with special needs or we've had folks with, you know, limited uh, uh, mental capacity or limited physical strength or something, you know, some reason that, that, that you need to have a tandem. So we try to keep the tandems handy. Not, I mean, on, on top of us really enjoyed to paddle together. I, I appreciate Chris being on. I, you can find him online at uh, YouTube, Chris Funk, Feral One, obviously. Uh, I know he has Yak, Yak Attack and, and, uh, and Jackson Kayaks team members. So uh, check out those brands, two of the best brands in sport. Uh, appreciate y'all listening, and we'll see y'all again next week. Thanks.